So what is AI? Well, it depends on whom you ask. AI was named a pretty long time ago in the 50s, artificial intelligence, and back then it kind of meant something else in regular usage. And I wonder sometimes whether today's calculators would have seemed like AI to folks in the 50s. Sometimes I like to joke that that version of AI was whatever would, would have impressed those folks, and whenever that was achieved, you just move the goalposts away a little bit. But in that old school sense, it is a sort of superset, and machine learning would be in there somewhere. Where machine learning is, let's remind ourselves, thing labeling, using examples. But the way that AI is talked about today is actually something else. It's more of a subset to machine learning. So let's have a look at some AI tasks and see what they have in common. There are tasks like figuring out whether an image has a cat in it or not, having a natural sounding, human sounding uh, conversation, playing games that you don't know the rules for, that you have to use uh, intuition to figure out the rules. Well, when you, the human, do these tasks, you are taking in information through your senses and you get the answer as if by magic. You don't even know how you know that's a cat. You don't know how you know how to move that joystick in that game. You just know it. You do something with these pixels and you don't know what you do. Now, think about trying to solve a task like this the traditional way. You have to really think hard, brainstorm what to do with every pixel and then give the computer those instructions by hand. Here's how you take the pixels for this photograph and here's how you figure out whether it has a cat in it or not. Now, what recipe are you going to write? And as you're thinking up that recipe, are you sure it's still gonna work for that situation? It's pretty hard to write these rules. You need complicated instructions to do this task. And you have the benefit of eons of evolution. Your brain just does this, you have no idea how it does it. And the task is easy for you. And generating the examples and checking whether the task is done correctly, that's really easy for you. But you don't know how you do the task. So how can you express that to a computer? You can't solve it the old way. AI, the way we think of it today, is about succeeding at those complicated tasks that programmers cannot write instructions for by hand. And you need super flexible algorithms, neural networks, and that is part of a class of stuff called deep learning. It's part of machine learning. And so when people say AI today, they tend to mean deep learning. That's the way that it's used. So solving these really complicated tasks that you couldn't solve a different way, except by teaching the computer with examples. So this is about automating the ineffable. You can't say how that task should be done. You can't solve it the way that you do the calorie prediction. Now, I also want to point out something really powerful here. When we as humans communicate with one another, when we are trying to get another human to do something for us, we have two modes of communication available to us. Direct instructions or, hey, look at a bunch of examples and you figure it out. And we use both as the situation demands. Before machine learning, we didn't have the ability to communicate that way with computers. All we could do is give the instructions directly. So that's like a huge part of our natural communication that we want to use, gagged. Think of this as an ungagging. Now, as a programmer, you can communicate with a computer two different ways. So don't think of this as something sci-fi and uh, robotsy with a mind of its own. Think of it as unlocking a second way to get computers to do stuff for you. That's what we're about. And this is really powerful because it's a whole class of tasks that you can automate that you just couldn't automate before.